Hi, I'm Emmanuel Xavier, and you're watching Out at the Center. Hit, hit, hit. Before leaving the center after 22 years of service to the community, Richard Byrne sat down with Bill Goldstein to talk about the evolution of the center during his time here and what has changed in the LGBT liberation movement over the last two decades. Good afternoon, Richard. Congratulations on your 22 years at the center. Thank you. You started here in 1986 and now it's 2009 and you're going to be leaving in February. It's hard to believe 22 years went by very quickly. Looking back to 1986 when you were thinking of coming to the center, I'm curious, what did the center board that existed at that, that time, what did they ask you? 1986 was, uh, life was so different. In, in those early days there were dances and some volunteer driven cultural programs and I think what the the board of directors of the center at that time was looking for was someone who could come in and develop programming uh, someone who'd had some experience building an LGBT institution I had been the editor of Boston's Gay Community News which was an LGBT uh, news weekly and that was a nonprofit and actually had a staff of 10 people and uh, in my role as managing editor there I'd actually been uh, had many of the duties similar to that of an executive director Chris Collins called me up uh, he served on the center's board at the time and said would you be interested in talking I said no oh, really? the first time um, and then they came back about uh, six months later and I said well yeah sure and what had changed in those six uh, months I reached the point where I felt like our community was really in crisis and I wanted to uh, do something full-time where I was contributing to our community so tell me about some of the key steps um, in the early years or continuing um, closer to the present that helped make the center a kind of force for political change with uh, New York politicians. If the center is sort of the grand central station gathering place of New York's queer community and an elected official or someone running for office wants to speak to that community, um, here's the place to do it. In April of 1987, uh, then New York State Governor Mario Cuomo came to the center to make his first public address to our community. And we've always been lucky to have people like that. In 1992 when we began our program called Promote the Vote, we began to go to the Board of Elections and say, you know, we would like 50,000 voter registration forms and we would mail them out with our newsletter, Center Happenings, to our entire mailing list. We've just registered a thousand voters or two thousand voters and you know, that's unusual uh, in this community if you're not part of a candidate's machine. This consciousness of social change and moving the levers of political power to move our community forward has got to inform everything we do. Well, what about this idea of activism and, and political progress, the idea of progress and a progressive gay community? From the very first day of, of the center's existence, it's been the fertile ground in which people in our community could come and organize. We invited Larry Kramer to come speak at the center and he founded ACT UP. Glad the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation was founded. You know, there were a group of guys sitting in, in an auditorium who called a meeting in the 80s who founded Gay Men of African Descent. One of the newest organizations to be founded at the center uh, is called Matayando and it's for uh, Uruguayan and Argentinian LGBT immigrants. So some of the other programs that have developed that are not necessarily politically related, I mean some of the, the family issues. 2009 uh, is the 20th anniversary of the founding of Center Kids. It's grown now to serve literally thousands of, of LGBT families in a lot of different ways. It provi continues to provide recreational programming for families with small children, but uh, a lot of its focus is in providing information and assistance to prospective parents. Could gay men partner with lesbians to have children together? I mean, there are all, all the different 
uh, ways that we create queer family. What are the things that you think are going to uh, bear fruit in, in, in later years? Certainly as the world has changed, as we've achieved progress, um, our thinking has changed, my, my thinking has changed, and, and, and today the progress we've made around marriage equality um, is fantastic and shocking. I think certainly no one expected in our lifetimes that uh, lesbians and gay men would be getting married in Massachusetts and California and Connecticut and, and hopefully soon here in New York State. That as our community grows and changes, the center will always be growing and changing to meet those changing needs. To create the structures that we can use to change the world uh, and make it a safer place for future generations of LGBT people. And that's all for this excerpt from Out at the Center. If you want to see the full show, check it out on our website at gaycenter.org slash out. Until next time, I'm Emmanuel Xavier. Goodbye.